want to come up to speed on Looker Studio quickly, you're in the right place. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly get started with Looker Studio. We're going to cover the steps to create your first report, connect a data source, and add charts to visualize your data. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to start building reports. Looker Studio lets you create one-page dashboards through to multi-page reports. You can also use a range of different charts to visualize data. Let's head to Looker Studio to create a report. To get started, we head to lookerstudio.google.com. This is where you'll find the Looker Studio homepage. If you're looking for ideas and inspiration, there are templates at the top. And below this, you'll find any recent reports you've created. OK, let's click Create and then select Report. We're now prompted to add a data source. This is how we connect the platform that contains the data you want to visualize in your report. Today, we're going to focus on Google Analytics as our data source. But Looker Studio supports a wide variety of connectors, including Google Sheets, Google Ads, YouTube, and even third-party connectors like Supermetrics for platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and more. Let's select Google Analytics. Then we need to choose an account. And a property. I'm going to connect Google's GA4 demo property, but you should select the property you want to use for your report. If you're connecting a data source for the first time, you'll be asked to authorize Looker Studio to access the platform you want to use. Once you've selected your property, click Add. And then Add to Report. We're now looking at the report canvas. This is where we create our report or dashboard in Looker Studio. At the top of the interface, the main menu lets you adjust different elements for your report. This includes things like adjusting the layout, viewing the version history, adjusting the smart guides, inserting charts, adding pages, and more. We're going to focus on the most important elements to get started. So let's name our new report. To do this, let's click Untitled Report in the top left corner and rename it. I'm going to name my report Website Overview by Loves Data. Next, let's remove the default table to start with a clean canvas. To do this, let's select the table and press Delete on our keyboard. Now let's adjust the layout of the report. Let's select Theme and Layout and click the Layout tab. Under Canvas Size, let's switch the setting to Portrait. This ensures the report layout fits the style we want. Now it's time to start adding some charts. We will begin by adding some key metrics to the top of the report. We're going to add some scorecards. To do this, let's click Add a Chart and select Scorecard. By default, the scorecard will display the total number of views, but we're going to adjust this. To do this, let's select the metric. Then search for and select Active Users. We can see the scorecard updates with the metric we selected. To add context to our scorecard, let's include a comparison. To do this, let's look for the Comparison Date Range option in the Setup tab. And let's enable this. Now let's select None, then None again. Choose Previous Period and click Apply. This shows whether active users are increasing or decreasing compared to the same number of days before the selected date range. Now let's duplicate the scorecard to display additional metrics. You can duplicate the scorecard using keyboard shortcuts or by selecting Edit and then Duplicate in the main menu. For the second scorecard, let's change the metric to Key Events. This will let us report on the number of conversions taking place on the website. To do this, we select the current metric. 
then search for Key Events and select this. The scorecard updates to show us the total number of key events. And let's duplicate the scorecard one more time. And let's select the current metric and search for Session Key Event Rate. And let's select this. This scorecard now shows us the percentage of sessions that include a key event. So this is the conversion rate for the website. If you would like to learn how to configure key events in Google Analytics, please check out the extra resources below this video. I've included a link to my dedicated tutorial covering conversion tracking for Google Analytics. Okay, we've now added some important metrics to our report using scorecards. So now let's add a table to show more detailed information. To do this, let's click Add a Chart, then select Table. By default, the table shows event names as the dimension, but let's change this to show the different pages people are viewing on the website. To do this, let's click the current dimension. Now let's search for Page Path and select this. We can see the table updates to show us the number of active users for each page. Now let's adjust the metric in the table. Let's click the default metric and let's search for Views and select it. If you want to include additional metrics, click Add Metric. Then search for the metric you want to add. Let's search for Engagement Rate and select it. This provides insights into how engaging each page is on the website. If people don't engage with the page as much, it will have a lower engagement rate. And let's add one more chart to our report. Let's click Add a Chart. And let's add a bar chart. We're going to adjust the chart to show us how people are finding the website. Let's change the dimension to Session Default Channel Group. And let's change the metric to Sessions. We can now see the marketing channels driving traffic to the website. OK, so at this point we've built the start of a simple single page report with top level metrics and a table. You can continue to build out and customise the report by adding more charts and if needed more pages. I recommend exploring all of the different charts by clicking Insert or by clicking Add a Chart. You'll find options to add time series charts, area charts, maps, pivot tables and more. As you build your report, remember that the right-hand panel lets you customise elements. Once you've selected a chart, you can adjust what's included in the chart using the Setup tab as we've seen. And you can use the Style tab to adjust how data is presented in the chart. For example, if we have our bar chart selected and select the Style tab, we can then change the chart from vertical to horizontal. There are also a whole range of other things you can customise for each of your charts. And to adjust the styling for all of the charts in your report at the same time, you can select Theme and Layout. Then click Customise at the top. This lets you change things like the font, colours and other elements of your charts all at the same time. Finally, when your report is complete, you can share it with others. Click Share in the top right corner to get a link or invite other people to access the report. This is a great way to collaborate with your team or present your findings to stakeholders. You've now created your first report in Looker Studio. You've learned how to connect a data source and how to add charts to visualise your data. If you're ready to learn more about Looker Studio, please take a moment to check out my other Looker Studio tutorials and my full Looker Studio course. You can find links to these in the description below this video. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel for all of my latest tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.